Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to the heavily requested Bakugan Evolutions concept. So, again I asked you guys to submit, if you have not seen the first episode, uh, there will be an icon in the top right corner of the screen, wherever that's at. I'll put a link in the description and it's probably going to be at the end of the video too. Uh, so I would watch that one first, unless for some reason you're weird and like watching part twos first. You do you. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get into this. So first one we have is Chrono Wavern. Very interesting. Let's take a look here. I like that the the ball forms on the side of this one. It looks cool. Oh, is it a dice thrower? Yeah, look at that. Huh. That's really neat. It's got like a longer tail too. I like that. Let's read the uh, abilities for it. It says Chrono Wavern. Story. While the Battle Brawlers were traveling through the current of time in order to stop the Mectavius Destroyer, the spirit of Wavern was able to gather small fragments of her and Drago's past to give herself a new body along with the ability to give herself an attribute now. She's waiting for Drago to find her again. And yes, she is an attribute dice thrower. That's super cool. That's really sick. Okay, we're off to a good start. I like the design. Saurus Knight, okay, got the nice ball form, almost like a Mectanium Surge looking style. It's got like the metal on it, very cool. Okay, 700, is that 760 Gs? Okay, let's see what the, uh, the powers are here. Pyrus Saurus Knight, Evolution of Saurus. The backstory is that Saurus Knight is a uh, long time ago evolution of Saurus and fights a friendly battle to get better, but the Saurus Knight died out. It became the armor of the Saurus to take away, so the Saurus cannot evolve into Saurus Knight. Okay, so there's, wait, hold on. All right, I'm, I'm trying to dissect this one, but it looks like basically there's some power armor that it can put on, or there used to be, the Saurus used to have armor. Um, and uh, there's one live Saurus Knight left, and now uh, it makes them bulky, but they do more damage. Okay, cool. <laughs> the mighty one too <laughs> interesting oh no there i was about to say where are the the ears but the ears are down here that is hilarious i like the ball form that's creative okay well what's the mighty one to do after the embarrassing loss in Alpha City, Wantu went on a personal mission to become stronger. But it was only when Nuvastroya was about to be attacked by the finished BT system, Wantu knew what to do. Help their friend Alpha and other Bakugan in the evacuation. But it was at this moment they knew their role as a protector, causing their body to evolve. That is hilarious. I love that. That's great. Abyss Leonidas. Ooh, okay. Man, look at that. He had a little core on his chest. Got the ball, like the arms coming out. And it looks like this actually like looks like yeah, you could fold this up and it would probably Dang, that looks good. It reminds me a lot of um Helix Dragonoid a lot. Let's take a look here. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, the core in the chest looks good. I like the feet. They're very sharp. And the claws. Nice. It's also got, um, there's another picture here. It's got some kind of sword or like cannon of some kind. It says the Doomslayer battle gear. Okay, it's a battle gear. Interesting. All right, let's read so we know what it does. Abyss Leonidas is an evolution of Omega Leonidas and is the partner and guardian Bakugan of Kyoko Kuso. Oh, okay, their original character. Cool. Explanation. When Drago and Leonidas flew up into the sky, carrying the BT system in hopes of destroying it, Leonidas absorbed half of the six attribute energies, and Drago absorbed the other half, causing them to evolve into Helix Dragonoid and Abyss, and Abyss Leonidas. That's why it looks familiar. Respectfully, the orb on Leonidas' chest enables him to change attribute during battle and help store the attribute energies he absorbed without it overwhelming the body. His battle gear is called Doomslayer. Very cool. Let's take a look again. Yeah, it looks sick. And they're using it for their own fanfiction. Very nice. I'm assuming that that will be in the fanfic section of the Discord. Starblast Apollinaire. Let's take a look. Okay. Mmm. 680 Gs. It's got double uh, attribute. Okay. Looks good. I like it. I like, it's like... It's like they took... Um, it's like a mix of... Kind of looks like elfin hands right there. I like that. I like the wings. Wings look good. Kept the purple design nice. All right, let's see what Star Blast Apollinaire is about. Okay, 680 Gs ability is Blast Nova or Blazing Nova Extreme. Sorry, 
It's story for the evolution. So during Dan's fight along with Polyneer to get back Drago, okay, so when he fought Spectra, against Spectra and Helios, during the fight when Helios used Metal Fencer Trap fused on him, okay, Dan uses an ability card called Ultimate Nova that when used, Apollinear starts to glow, slowly evolving into Stardust Apollinear. And once it evolved, it creates a large fireball and shoots it towards Helios and Metal Fencer and destroys them both instantly. I like that. That's a cool idea. I like the name a lot, Star Blast Apollinear. It, it would be really neat to see a, um, like to go with the Star Blast name, like give it the Generation 3, like galactic look. Not entirely. I don't think it should be entirely, but like maybe underneath the wings, um, put like a space design. That'd be sick. But I don't know. Apollinear's wings are pretty iconic. The the yellow has always been cool on Apollinear. Nice. All right, this is Shadow Linehall. Ooh, he's got like a mouth on his chest. Dang, okay. We got another ball form up on top too. Or very reminiscent of the original Linehall, which is nice, but the mouth on that is what I want to know about. Okay, after the defeat of Magmel, Ren and Linehall went to Casarina's old lab and found potential data regarding Dark Bakugan. Okay. But when they tried to activate her computer, a security system activated, causing Linehall to mutate with Dragonoid and Darak DNA, resulting in his own evolution in Shadow Linehall. Ooh, okay. Interesting. This is, see, this is actually a really cool concept to expand upon, because I feel like Generation, or not, sorry, Season 3, like Gundalian Invaders, had so much good story potential with... Uh, Ren and Linehall, but I don't know personally. I feel like they focus too much on the battles and Like the fight than actually following up on like the dark Bakugan and the concept behind that and I think this is definitely like a nice like interpretation of what could happen because There's so much they could have done that they just left apart, which is really unfortunate And I'm not sure this one got completely finished, but here's a quick sketch of it um, It's a new evolution of fear ripper, which is pretty cool um, this one stands up, which is kind of nice. You can see it's probably like it closes down and then the ball form shuts like that with the That's cool. Honestly, I like this version of Fear Ripper better than the original. So nice. Thank you for at least putting it on there uh, Even if you couldn't finish everything. This one's called Aquas Neptune Griffin Ooh, This is unique. Okay. I like the trident. The trident's cool. I like the wings. I wonder how I wonder how this one would close Interesting the ball form looks good. Oh, I bet this one's got cool powers. Hang on. Uh, Griffin and his master went on a journey to Vestroia and became stronger. And after finding and defeating Frosh, okay, they received an Aquas power-up that made Griffin evolve. Now he is a powerful leader for all the Aquas Bakugan, and his powers allow him to make his legs disappear and his tail grow when underwater to swim faster than any enemy. Mm. We got a Cayman Rider fan here. It says, uh, some Cayman Riders like mixed with Bakugan. So let's see. Dragonoid survive based on the Cayman Rider Ryuki survive. Ooh, okay. Ball form. Nice. Oh, wait, the eyes on this look cool. Ooh. I like this part too, like on the hands, little like wings there. That's neat. Oh, the, the silver on this, like the metal parts look really cool. Yeah, you got like, okay, so it matches like there and there. Mm. I like this a lot. I like the ball form. It looks good. You can see them on TikTok too if you really want to. There's another one here. I want to look at this. Percival, I think. Yeah. Wing Percival based on uh, Cayman Rider Knight. Ooh, ball form there. Hmm. I like the cape. The cape's cool. And then, yeah, that looks good. I can definitely see the resemblance there. Yeah, that looks good. Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> Basically an ad, a massive advertisement for Cayman Rider. You can tell how much I love the franchise. I've never seen it, but I have heard really good things about it because Bakugan had um, some ba like early prototypes with Cayman Rider, which is cool. And I had to do a little bit of research on it for some of my videos, but yeah, these look good. I think I like, I think I like Dragomore. That is just a really sick, the, the red and this, like I like the lighter red, the dark red, the dark red and whatever gray you used here, they are fantastic. All right, this is a um, sketch for now, but this is Snapshot Terror Claw. Ooh, oh, it looks almost like Cthulhu right here. 
Dang! Oh, it got longer. Oh, it turned into like, instead of like a crab, it turned into like a crawfish. Ooh. That looks sick. Look at the hand. It's like, I don't know how easy this comes up on, on the uh, video, but like this hand's forward and this is the claw and the claw's got like a tongue. So like this one would open up two and have a tongue. That's, this is really cool. I really hope this one's colored. Juice Man sent us something. Let's see. It's called a uh, Boneyard Naga. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see the, okay, it's just like Battle Gear Nano. Ooh. All right, let's see what he says. Basically a skeleton version of Silent Irregular Naga searched up undead goon from Rift Apart. Cool. So, all right, Mace Boulderon. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, he, oh wait, that's really cool. He looks like a, um, like some kind of construction vehicle. Oh, and he's got the, oh yeah. Power wheel. I like that. I bet he like spins, like just rotates around, just throwing it around. All right, it says, uh, after the feat of Magmel, Paige and Bulberon return to Gundalia, where they learn that the scientists of Gundalia and Nithia have been working together on a new type of Baku Nano. After testing it out, Bulberon and the Baku Nano started to fuse together. This resulted in Bulberon's evolution, Mace Bulberon. That's really sick. I like this one. Yeah, and you can see how the ball form would close. Got that, it shuts down. That's so cool. And his hands are like, yeah, they, I guess those are his hands. And that's the the uh, mace. That's really cool. Blade Aragon. Ooh, look at this. He looks um a lot like Amazon as well. It's like almost a mix of like Aragon, Amazon, and um, Tigrera, Blade Tigrera. That's really cool. I like the diamond in the center. It's a story. He finished his training with his master. That's awesome. He also looks like a Power Ranger a little bit, which I'm kind of into. That's really cool. All right, we have another of uh, the Kamen Rider ones. So this one is Inferno Falconeer based on Kamen Rider Jin. Ooh. You can definitely see the similarities in this show, which is kind of crazy. I like that one too. This one reminds me of um, like Wilda, Thunder Wilda a little bit. That looks good. I like the sword. It's like a giant sword feather, which is on par. Right, so this is another submission that Drago the Komodo put in. Uh, they're not really drawings or anything, but they are evolution concepts. Uh, they're Legos, which is really cool. And uh, I'll put them up on screen like this and kind of just scroll through them. Uh, but I'll read the names off as I go. Uh, so you have Avian Dragonoid. So it's very bird-like, which is sick. Here you have Shinobi Gorum. I like this one a lot. He kept the shield, but he's also just like, it's just cool you can make this in Lego. I think that's neat. Uh, Dashing Tigrera. Okay, I like this one. Sphinx Hydronoid, which is unique. The head, yeah, I guess I can see that one. They're really cool. I like the spike in the center there. I think it, I guess it doesn't have a tail because it's like a, well, maybe, I don't know. You can't really, oh yeah, you can kind of see it right there. I was gonna say, where's the tail? But that looks like the tail. Nice. Okay. Striking Preus. Dang. Just the fact you can make this is insane. Huh. And then the last one is Raptor Skyrus. Oh, I like Raptor Skyrus. I like that a lot. I like the long legs. That looks sick. That is so cool. And then I'll create, I'll quickly go through. There were some alternate versions of these in case anyone's interested. I like that. I actually like this version of Hydronoid better. All right, Freyus is looking a little sus there. <laughs> yeah, Skyrus is 100% my favorite there. Uh, that was really cool. So this is supposed to be Ventus Mercury Siege. Ooh. <laughs> oh, this might be the thumbnail. I don't know yet. This looks good. This reminds me of like a... Um, metrovania or like side scroller fighting game uh any kind of like rpg side scroller like survive fight game like roguelike i guess yeah roguelike is what i'm looking for this looks like a character in a roguelike game and i'm all for it like this in particular that's so cool and the kick with like the wing looking thing yeah that ooh, ooh, 
that looks like. Oh, and the symbols right there. That is so cool. What are the powers for this one? Uh, each attribute of Siege has a different type of weapon and their evolution varies depending on their attribute as well. Ventus Siege evolves into Ventus Mercury Siege, who has traded some of their bulky defensive armor for more speed and maneuverability. Dude, that looks so good. Look at the lightning call. All right, Levios Abyss Omega. The Swift Swimmer has evolved to the point in which it can easily take to the skies as it darts within the sea. Nice. Okay, so it's like Abyss Omega, which is one of my favorite background to brawl with. Uh, and then you give it wings, which is like, of course, what else would you do? <laughs> Nice, I like it. Look, at it's got like a little twin tail thing going on. Oh, that looks good. I bet he's quicker too now. That's even cooler. All right, we have Ravenous. All right, we have Raptorix Idub, I believe. Um, or Ravenous Raptorix. But that looks really cool. I like that. Oh, look how skinny he is. like a little lizard with like big like feathers and stuff. I like the purple. It looks good. Let's see what it says on here. Uh, Ravenous Raptorix with retractable wings and extra sharp razor talons with one extra long talon for a bit more raptor claw feature. That'd be sick. Dude, it'd be cool if you gave him like, um, Velociraptor feet and they like curled up and they get stabbed. But I guess like the hands kind of do that too. That's really cool looking. I wonder what the ball form on this one would look like. It's like a mix of, um, he's a generation three Zipperator, I think I'm thinking of. I think I'm thinking Zipperator. All right, here we have Primal Limulus, which first off looks like a narwhal to me and i'm all for it like a prehistoric horseshoe crab narwhal really sick i like the tail on this one i really like that let's see let's see what the powers are in the limulus group there is a leader responsible in protecting the rest of the group those are already bigger and stronger than regular lim limulus but there are some even bigger than that those specimens undergo an evolution called primal limulus don't think they're as peaceful as the rest of the herd. Those ferocious beasts don't take lightly as they will protect their group with all their might. Anyone who underestimates them will get snapped by their claws like a twig. Ability cards. Deep Sea Tornado. Primal Limulus ejects concentrated water from under its tail, propelling himself into a very fast speed to ram the enemy with its mighty horn. That'll definitely do the damage. Uh, in Bakugan, Primal Limulus swims like a torpedo and the opponent's gate card, negating it as well as ramming it into him from under the card. So like going up under, okay. Uh, removing 100 B power from the enemy. Very cool. B power, G power, all the same thing. Unbreakable Shell. Primal Limulus hardens its shell and curls into defensive positions, making him almost impenetrable. In Bakugan Battle... This move prevents his B power from being dropped by any source. Hmm. Sea Guardian. In Bakugan battles, when enemy Bakugan aims his ability at allied Bakugan, Limulus can intervene, swimming to that card and taking the hit for the ally. Okay. It's a very like, kind of like part of the pack group like up here. Has great correlation with Unbreakable Shell. The most likely have origin in Primal Limulus protective nature. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Uh, and then an update from last time, we have uh, this one, but we also have more of them in the different attributes. This is super cool. Thank you for submitting these. Really like that. Dude, I think Pyrus is my favorite. No. Oh, I don't know. Mm, maybe Ventus. I think I'm feeling Ventus today. I don't know what's going on, but I think everyone's on like a Ventus kick. Oh, here's the updated Terror Claw. Yes. Yes. Dude, this one's so sick. Look at it. Look at him. <laughs> Description. A big size, durable, jagged shell and a half snapping claws with those and more. This Bakugan lives up to the name Terror in Terror Claw. Unfortunately, the same strengths are the reasons behind his lacking speed and mobility, giving him fast enough, giving fast enough Bakugan a chance to dodge or worse maneuver and strike him from behind. To combat this, his crusta this crustacean needs to change, he needed to improve, he needed to evolve, and he just he did just that. At first glance, it looks more of the same with a view with view with a few extras. Like the extended and covered in Spike's body or newly added tail, giving him an appearance closer to a lobster rather than a crab, okay? Uh, or his pride and joy, his bigger, meatier, meaner claw, uh, now armed with extending tentacles created for one purpose, where the original terror claw waited for its prey to come down. Uh, Snapshot Claire terror claw, on the other hand, drags his prey to the to its doom himself. To those brave or foolish enough to face this menace, beware. Maybe next time he will snatch you too. Ability snatch out. 
When you snapshot Terraclaw can target any Bakugan from adjacent gate cards. Ooh, so it's like Marionette almost. The targeted Bakugan gets dragged to Terraclaw's claw and his gate card to be squeezed and ejected with Corrosive Toxic that lower, lowers caught Bakugan's G power by 100 and blocks access to all attribute ability cards. Nice. As long as they hit the back, as long as the hit Bakugan remains on field or in other words, a Scorpion, he is not, but he does get over there with the best of them that is super cool looking that turned out to be everything i wanted it to be <laughs> all right up next we have jim tuscor which ooh, that's really cool it's got oh it's got like this on there now like a little mace got this it's got like quartz growing from it i like the eyes i bet they're like gems Ooh, let's see jim tuscor has six legs as for power, builds up energy over time. If the energy maxes out, its G power gets a huge boost. If it's defeated while the energy builds up, other allied Bakugan in play get a boost. The gems are supposed to grow out of his legs. Ooh. So he's just like a defensive ball of like team energy. So he either, you either don't hit him and he uses all his energy, or if you do, all his teammates get energy. So. That's really cool strategy. I like the concept behind this one. All right, and the last one uh, I put in, it's by Setsuna Senpai, and this is Corbinoid. Uh, so I've seen these because I had to put them in myself, uh, but I'll go through them really quick because uh, they load a little weird. All right, so lastly, we have Corbinoid here. Uh, this one's really cool and it's got a bunch of different attributes, but my favorite part of this one's actually the hood on this thing. Really cool, but you can see like the design super nice. You can see the tail in the ball form, which is super cool. The attributes on the back. You got like a face going on here. Very snake-like, obviously. Um, but he's even got the springs put on it, which is super cool. But there's a bunch of different versions of this one, so I'll show them all. So this is Subterra. We have a Darkest, but this is the Baku Flip version. But again, you see this hood. So like, here's the Baku Flip, and then here is the regular one. So you can see like the difference here really easy super super cool i love it and then here we have a ventus version which you know you've got clouds and stuff because obviously it can fly or at least it's got ventus abilities we have the pyrus version which obviously you're going to use lava super cool and then chaos which just has these nice like rainbow stars really reminds me of how like the gate cards open you know super cool i actually really like the chaos a lot it says corbinoid is an evolution of rattaloid uh, I designed him to be rather simple, uh, and it opens much like Alto, Bar Alto Brontes, but backwards. His hood folds into the hollow spaces behind his upper body head so he can fit in the ball without any extra parts sticking out on the side. So we don't have any Alto Brontes disease. <laughs> Lore. Corbinoids typically have a low base G power somewhere between 300 and 400 Gs. Sometimes when evolving, they will actually lose G power. Interesting. On first glance, they may seem rather weak, but they actually hold a few dirty tricks that can zap the opposing opponent Bakugan of their strength and give Corbinoid the chance to strike. Best used with ability cards that support low G power Bakugan, such as Shiny Devil and Shadow Avatar, also works wonders with lowest G power wins gate card like Tricky Gate and Duck and Win. Those are my favorite. Um, first move, Venom Fang. Uh, play during a battle where you have a Corbinoid, reduce your opponent's Bakugan by 100 Gs. Then if your Corbinoid's G power is still less than your opponent's Bakugan, your Corbinoid gains 200 Gs. Corbinoid buries its fangs deep into the opponent Bakugan, both injecting Venom into their veins to weaken the foe and gaining strength from those much stronger than itself. Really nice. Decoy Retaliation. Play at the beginning of a battle where you have a Corbinoid. The first time your opponent activates an ability card in this battle that would increase the G power of their Bakugan, negate that card's G power bonus and Corbinoid gains that G power instead. <laughs> that is dirty. Corbinoid's hood displays a pattern that depicts a pair of fake eyes on the back for the sole purpose of tricking the opponent Bakugan into attacking the wrong thing. The opponent's Bakugan mistakenly attacks the false eyes on the back hood. In that moment, Corbinoid can strike and catch the opponent's Bakugan off guard, constricting them to gain the upper hand of the fight. Very cool. Hypnotic Sway. Okay, this one, obviously, you gotta put that in there. Play only when an opponent's Bakugan stands on another gate card. Move that Bakugan to Corbinoid's gate card. Your opponent's Bakugan does not gain the gate card power bonus from that gate card. 
Once a prey has been spotted, Corbinoid begins to sway side to side, hypnotizing the opponent's Bakugan and lures them into Corbinoid's gate card, giving Corbinoid the chance to control the fight. Dude, that's awesome. That Bakugan's super cool. I'm, I appreciate all the detailed work you put into the, um, like, the moves and stuff and, like, how you made, like, each piece of the Bakugan kind of work. It's, like, constricting and stuff. Like, even the part where you talk about, like, the fake eyes on the back of the Bakugan, like, I'm glad you put that in there because, like, it all just correlates and makes sense, which is really awesome. All right, guys, that is the end of uh, the submissions. Thank you all for submitting. We had some really cool ones this time. I uh, I liked all of these. They're very cool. Thank you all for submitting. Um, just some really neat and interesting detailed Bakugan. I don't see how you guys can create all this. It's super cool. Um, and just like how you can like fit them into like the already established storyline. Even more awesome. You guys are so creative. Um, but yeah, we, we'll probably do a part three if you guys want it. Uh, you'll just have to let me know. But I I like doing these. They're really fun. Uh, just reacting and reading what you guys come up with is always awesome. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe for more awesome content. My name is Jesse. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.